No. Oh yeah, it's good stuff. Today we're back on Rosalie, the Volvo 740. Now, I recently picked up this car with a blown engine. We replaced the engine. Everything seemed fine, bar one thing, the coolant temp sensor. For some reason, when I was building everything back up, the connector for the sensor actually kind of exploded. It blew out of the head. I'm not sure exactly what happened. Maybe the wire shorted or something happens. It was damaged. I'm not really sure, but the car still drove okay. It was a little bit of a rich mixture or certainly an incorrect mixture. We had the Lambda light on the dash. So this is what's left of the sensor. So I actually replaced the sensor and it ran the same. And I pulled number one fuse to clear the codes, to clear the, you know, the engine uh, fault codes and things like that, to clear the ECU, put it back in. Then it was a hard start as before the light came back on. Still codes for the engine call and temp sensor. Number two. One. Two. One, two, three, same as before. That's just for engine coolant temp sensor. Number six. Four. Same as before, so they're coolant temp sensor codes. So I thought, well, that's a bit strange. Wasn't really sure what to do next because I'd changed the sensor, I checked the wiring, everything was fine. So I thought, well, I needed to drive it back to the garage anyway. At the moment, I'm where I live. So I thought, well, I'll get it back to the garage because I need to fit the new radiator and things like that and, and do some other bits and pieces and I'll have a closer look when I get there. And that's when things got worse. So I'll show you where I broke down. I'm in Elsa now. The old faithful. She never lets me down. But I just wanted to show you guys what happened just now. She struggled forward to here and died. And this is where I was in the middle of it all, blocking the tram, blocking the traffic, the whole lot. And then I had to get out and push it. She'd cut out, so by this point I'm pushing it on foot all the way up here and it is a bit of a hill as well all the way to there oh. so I think the first thing to do is actually just to see a few days later how it runs to be honest Put the battery back on. Yes, I still need to clean in here. As soon as she's actually running properly, I will do it. So we've still got plenty of water. Yeah, let's just see if it starts now and see how it runs. Well, started well that time actually started a lot quicker. No. Yeah, no point. No, she's something's really gone wrong there. I don't know what to do now. Really, what I'll probably do in this case is use some brake cleaner, which I may or may not have. I've got a bit spray some brake cleaner into the intake and see if we can actually rev it up because if it is not getting enough fuel for whatever reason obviously if we fire some brake cleaner in there and then we open up the throttle that will actually obviously the revs will will then they will increase
So that's actually bad news. Purely in the sense of, like, what the hell is it? Like, if it's not an issue that's like, okay, this is broken and that's it and it's a fixed thing. When it's, when it's like this and it's obviously intermittent, then things get much harder to actually figure out what's going on. And like, let's say it runs fine now. Do I trust it? It ran like this before and then it drove for about 10 minutes and then it cut out and now it's okay. But with these kind of problems, you think, well, okay, so it's running now. You pull out, you drive up the road and it stops again in the middle of traffic. When I sprayed the brake cleaner, maybe I cleaned the MAF off and fixed the problem. Could have been that, couldn't it? Because if the MAF sensor's faulty, you'll get issues with, with like that. So let's hit the road, I suppose, and fingers crossed we don't break down. Welcome to my neighborhood. We made it. Yeah, she stinks, she smells not right at all not happy smells very lean but yeah we made it anyway so we'll get this problem fixed for sure before we drive it out of here again i was just stood here eating a sandwich looking at the car thinking about what i'm going to do next and i noticed that it's obviously had a whack here at some point as well probably hence the new indicator lamp here you can see where it's folded over that should be flat, it should be like that. Totally flat across. Well, as you can see there, it's been pushed in. But yeah, it's an old Volvo, isn't it? Just hammer it straight and just keep driving it. I'm gonna disconnect the coolant temp sensor again. So I've just been doing some testing around and I think somehow, some way, I managed to potentially plug the plug for the idle air control valve onto the coolant temp sensor. What an idiot. I don't know how that's happened. It's so obviously if the loom, when I put everything back together, if the loom was twisted somehow and I thought, well, that goes to there, that goes to there because of the position they were in, but they were obviously switched. I think I underestimated how many connections are exactly the same on this car. The knock sensor, the temp sensor, the idle air control valve, they've all got the same plug. And I've obviously just thought I've known where they've gone. Thought I farted, but I shit. Thought I farted, but I shit. What an absolute helmet. Bit smoky. We haven't got any lights on the dash like we used to. She's still. No, she's idling where she should be. So someone recommended Dusty degreaser to clean the engine bay on Rosalie. So that's what I'm going to try. Hopefully it's good. Hopefully it's as good as they say it is. Oh yeah, it's good stuff. I'm gonna be here a while though, aren't I still? But I'm not complaining. Is 
this car actually worth this amount of effort? It's definitely a labour of love. This video will be the definition of Mr. Bit, Mr. Spot. Once I've gone over again, so it's nice and white all over, the small details, they don't matter. Not when the outside of the car looks like this. And I haven't really shown you guys that much close up, but there's so many, there's stents and scratches all around the whole car. It's, it's trashed, paints chipped off, scratches, dents, marks. There's loads of little touch up points where there's rust on the body and they've used rust converter. You know, all this, you see all these dents here. It's all the whole car. The roof is dented, everything's dented. So all we want to do is just get it most of the way, don't we? That's a bit better, isn't it? Uh, it still looks dirty in there, of course. It's not, you know, I'm not going to do any, you know, music over slow panning shots of the engine like. <laughs> Yeah, if you want good quality cleaning content, this is not the channel for it. For that, you need to go to my brother's channel, Partridge Exterior Cleaning. Yeah, he's on over 100,000 subs now, so that says something about the work he's doing. So yeah, if you like the satisfying cleaning, definitely go and check him out. Nah, something's still not right. I did disconnect. Yeah, I can smell the fuel. I did disconnect. Ah, that's what it is. That's what it is. Where I was cleaning the engine bay. I've knocked off the king lead. Now I've just put a load of fuel into the cylinder so it'll start up poorly but it will start didn't it just try to fire without a king lead on it though for a moment there oh yeah guys way better So there we go. I hope this was useful to any of you watching that might have plugged your idle air control connector into your coolant temp sensor and caused all kinds of problems. <laughs>